Right then, it is an absolute roller coaster being an England men's cricket fan. We were looking like we were going to dominate the world in red ball cricket with Baz ball. We were dominating the world in white ball cricket. We are, at the time of recording, still reigning World Cup champions in ODI and T20 cricket. But it is the hope that kills you. We have got senior players calling out the English cricket calendar for the reason why they aren't playing well. We've got now retired players doing interviews about how they chirp the Australian captain from 60 metres away in a game that we lost and a series that we drew. And the ODI side is in the mud. We're bottom of the table. We have suffered shocking defeats to Afghanistan, Sri Lanka. Wouldn't count the New Zealand one, but it's not looking great. In this video, I'm going to discuss why we're so bad now at ODI cricket. But before we get into it, make sure you leave a like, a comment on this video, and subscribe for more videos like this. Go and check me out on social media, Alights98, and the Cricket Casuals boys, because we do have the Content Creators Cup next year, which is going to be massive. <laughs> Let's start with the coach, Matthew Mott. He was brought in after guiding Australia women to several titles. They are considered to be one of the best sporting sides in the world. So imagine, I think it doesn't take a lot to be a coach when you've got the calibre of players they had. He could literally just rock up, probably not say a lot, and they were probably going to win. Yes, he's been brought in, and England do have incredible talents, but it feels very much like it's player-led. If you look at the times English cricket has done well, the coach-captain combination has kind of been equal. This feels very much like it's Butler's side and Matthew Bott's there just to fill a role. Um, obviously on that, if you look at Bayliss Morgan, 2019, um, that was a great combination, you know, both strong characters, but you wouldn't really say, yes, Morgan, you know, the captain's always going to be the figure, you know, out in the press and whatever, the, the face that you see. But I think Bayliss behind the scenes did very well. And it's very similar with McCullum Stokes at the minute. You know, Stokes, he's leading the side and it's very much he's leading the players. But I think McCullum is the brains behind it. And, you know, the whole the whole system is called Basball. It's named after the coach. Mop ball at the minute is terrible. I don't think he's progressed the side. They've literally just gone, all right, it worked well in 2019. It'll work well now, and it hasn't. So I generally think Mop will probably go after this. The record since he's been in charge has been shocking. So yeah, I think Mop's probably going to suffer for this one, and I don't think that's the worst thing in the world. But it's not all down to Matthew Mop. Like I said, the coach-captain combination is key. I generally don't think Joss Butler is the man to take this side forward. He is very... I think it's very difficult to follow Owen Morgan, like who was an unbelievable captain. If you look at Butler, I think you've only got to look at the tosses that he's done this tournament. You know, he had one toss where he won it and he didn't really know why he chose what he chose. It's for an elite professional cricketer. To not know that, I think he just basically went, oh yeah, well, we like chasing. Didn't look at the condition, didn't look at the pitch. Just, like I said before, just did what he knew and didn't really think about it. They ended up losing that game. The toss against Sri Lanka, um, South Africa, sorry, was shocking. Uh, <laughs> 35, 40 degree heat goes, yeah, let's have a bowl. Every club cricketer knows, you don't do that. South Africa and rock at 400 and no, the bowlers were knackered. They then have to go and chase that mammoth total. Not a, not a chance in the world, and that's all down to him. His decisions as captain have been shocking. If you look at, like I said, Morgan's such a difficult one to follow because at least he had clear ideas what to do. He knew what to do when, field and positions, bowlers, whatever. He seemed like that guy. Butler, he looks like very much... He, he, he seems like a lovely guy. I'm not saying Morgan wasn't. Morgan's a great bloke. Butler's a very nice guy, but doesn't have that killer in him. Doesn't have that ruthless streak. He's very much, oh, it's happened before, we'll be fine. And, yeah, it's just not worked. And I generally think he will go as well. I, I don't think Butler can carry on leading this side. I don't see him as a leader. Yes, very, very good cricketer. 
but not captain material. Moving on to the actual playing squad, and I think this is the crux of it. I think it's very much the end of an era. I think we can all see that. Um, you've got players in their mid to late thirties who will be going out the door. You know, you had Stokes who had retired, come out of retirement, not done anything, really jeopardised his future playing to come and play this tournament and not done anything. It would have been better off if he had his surgery recovered and then could focus on test cricket, which I think a lot of these players should now do. The focus should be on the test side, going down to Australia, winning back those ashes. And a lot of players should scrap playing ODI cricket. I think T20 is a hard one to scrap because that's where they make their money. But they should all be focusing on Red Bull cricket now. Um, and let a really young generation come through like Ren Ahmed, you know, Gus Atkinson's bowled well. You know, get those youngsters in and they can take the ODI side forward. There is a strong feeling, I think, that we potentially were a bit too arrogant. Yes, we were on top of the world four years ago. T20s were still kind of all right, but T20s, are, I think it's more down to luck on the day. Like You don't need that much skill to be a T20. It's just biffing, isn't it? ODI is that beautiful mix between red and white ball cricket where you can go at it hard or you kind of... There's different skills to it, and I generally think England thought we will rock up and we will win it because we're the best side in the world. They have potentially sat on four years, not progressed. Like I said, Mott don't think it's progressed aside from 2019. And it's very evident that the side has not progressed and everyone else has either caught them up or gone beyond them. And, you know, there's different tactics at play. Not everyone plays like England in terms of, let's go harder, let's go harder. Yes, South Africa do. Um, New Zealand think about it a little bit more. India are the perfectly balanced side. Um, I think it's generally a wake-up call for English cricket, especially ODI cricket, that when you are in a strong position, you need to keep evolving and developing, and they simply haven't done that. A lot of a lot of these players will not play ODI cricket again for England. Rob Key has come out and said, yes, it would have been great to play in India earlier and get used to it, but they have to, you know, accommodate New Zealand in England, which is again money, you know, get the crowds in. I don't mind that so much. I don't think that was a huge issue. But, you know, if you look at the number of ODI games or one day games the England squad played for their counties, it was not many. <laughs> and Joe Root has come out and said, yes, we should have played more ODI cricket, replacing the blast. The main thing they've brought in is the 100, which is killing the cricket calendar. I will do a video on how I think we can fix that, so make sure you subscribe uh, to see that video. But if you enjoyed this one, uh, leave your comments on, you know, laughing at England, how, you, how do you think they can improve, uh, where do you think English cricket goes from here, because it is currently in the mud.